Critics Gardeners, it is another nice rainy morning here in Eastern Hawaii. Um, it'll be short of rain. Only been about 60% normal this year. And so it's nice to see. Yeah, like four and a half inches last night. That'd be a lot of rain somewhere else and probably cause disasters in the central U.S. But here in Hawaii, it's just kind of a good size rain. Um, it's still at it today. It's going to go on for at least another 24, so we'll be wet. In the meantime, though, I've had a lot of time to think, and riddle me this, gardeners. What are the two creatures on Earth that require making enormous amounts of noise in order to have sex? Give up? Ha! All right, number one is a rock band. Number two is a cokey frog. So if you ever wondered what Ozzy and Puerto Rican frogs got in common, you know now. Both noisy if they want to get happy. So I've been thinking about, you know, what can I do with this problem? Because these silly frogs, they like to move in right next to the house. And then they get right outside the window. And they, I mean, they scream at high decibels. It's very, very annoying. Uh, nothing really needs to make that much noise uh, in order to mate, uh, trust me. If the frogs do eventually survive here in Hawaii and become part of the native environment in a million years or so, they'll probably learn to be quiet. <laughs> we'll leave them alone if they're quiet. So most of you who live here in Hawaii know that the county says, well, you know, spray citric acid. You know, a lot of us have found, well, citric acid's expensive. Uh, it doesn't really work that well in a dilution as a spray. It's really not that great. Um, works better if you throw the dry powdered citric acid at the frog. But, you know, it's pricey and it burns the leaves off of plants. And, and some frogs are always in the bushes. And so, you know, who wants to ruin your landscape? If I was going to do that, I'd use a flamethrower. It'd be a lot more fun. Um, so, you know, I've switched to lime, which previous videos you've seen my duster, you know, and, and it works to an extent. But there's always going to be a few of them little froggies that are going to move in right outside that window. And, you know, previously I'd been taking just a mitt full of lime and throwing it right in their faces. And that does work. But I ran out of lime again. I go shopping for some more. Stuff's not real cheap, so, it's, you know, there's a price to it. I'm trying to come up with a solution in the meantime. Well, you know, I've used uh, uh, wood ash from my barbecues. That works to an extent. It doesn't hold up as well as the lime does because it washes away really fast. Um, but the other day, I'd caught one of them guys right in my hand while I was working on the vines here. And, well, I didn't want to let them go. They're kind of slippery, you know, and it, that is if I took my grip off the frog, he was probably going to get away from me again. And I had my prize, and I was going to keep it. And so I decided, well, you know, I think I'll try hot water. And so we have solar hot water here on the house. On a sunny day, we're getting 140 degree water coming down from the pipes. Uh, even on a cloudy day, we're getting, you know, 110, 120 or so degree to the water. It's never quite hot enough on my calloused hands that the water will hurt me. I mean, it's uncomfortable, but it won't burn me. Uh, so I can plunge my hand straight into the solar hot water uh, briefly. I wouldn't want to shower in it, but I can put my hands in the stuff. Well, I decided I'm going to take that froggy. I went over to the tap. I opened the tap up. I let that water come running out of there, and I stuck my hand underneath like that. Man, it did not take five to ten seconds, and that frog went boing, stiff as a board. He was over. These frogs cannot tolerate hot water. And so water that's of the temperature that most human beings can take, the frogs, they're over. It's history. So I'm thinking, yeah, well, that's a good way to get rid of the ones I got in my hand. But then when I ran out of lime, I thought, you know, I'll bet any money if I went ahead and I hooked up my black rubber garden hoses here to a good spray nozzle and then ran them right up to the hot water heater, I might be able to use this thing. Yep. So I hooked my pure black rubber hose, which is nice and durable and flexible, it will take hot water, right up to the tap at the carport sink, and then I went and I turned on the hot water faucet full. I just snaked the hose out there in the landscape into a convenient location where I knew the frogs had been hiding. And I went ahead and I set my sprayer nozzle to tight stream, 
And then all you got to do is just run this puppy until you get the water coming out of the hot water heater so you're running full. This has got <laughs> quite a lift on it. It's out there hitting the driveway right now. This is pretty forceful. Uh, I also have some little mini fireman's nozzles that work nice too. But before you go after the frog, you've got to make sure that you got full hot water coming out of the end of this so that when you hit him with the first blast, it's over for Mr. Froggy. So the other night I was sitting out here on my porch and all of a sudden in that croton over there I heard cookie, 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 cookie. And I went, oh, there's one now. I took that, I went in there and it was cookie, 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 cookie. And all of a sudden, plop. Ruggy hit the ground under the shrub and he didn't move again. The only question I have about this process, I am uncertain as far as just exactly how much hot water my landscape shrubs will tolerate. I know that citric acid burns. I'm pretty sure that most of the shrubs here with the harder foliage, like that croton has a hard waxy leaf, but I think they're very resistant to water probably as much uh, as I am. It's a good chance that if I can take it, most of these plants probably can. Although there are some things like lettuce or orchid flowers and so on, that they're, they're not going to put up with this. Even the pressure of the water could tear them apart. I think a whole lot of the stuff in the landscape is going to easily put up with 140 degree water. Since it's solar heated here, I'm really paying almost nothing to get that water. And so uh, it's, a, it's a really environmental way to do this. It doesn't leave any residues, you know, and so on and so forth. So I like it. Anything that makes my world quieter at night is in favor. Cookie, 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 cookie. Cookie, cookie, cookie. Take that, Mr. Froggy.